Good morning, children. In the previous class, already we have discussed about nutrition, about nutrients, about photosynthesis, definition for photosynthesis, and equation for photosynthesis. Today, we are going to discuss about life processes. What are life processes? The processes which help the living organisms for their survival and purification of their race are called life processes. That means there are different types of life processes are there. Without these life processes, no living organism can survive. So these life processes enable the living organisms for their survival. For example, nutrition. Without nutrition, can anyone survive? Can any living organism survive? No, not at all. So every living organism, they need food for their survival. So eating of food or procurement of all the nutrients into the body of an organism is called nutrition. So nutrition act as a life process. Similarly, respiration. Without taking oxygen, without the release of carbon dioxide from our body, can any living organism survive? No. So all living organisms, they do respire. So respiration is also a life process. Similarly, excretion. Without excretion of nitrogenous waste, toxic substances from the body, what happens? It becomes poison to our body. And the organisms will die. So it is necessary that all the waste from our body has to be removed. So excretion is also a kind of life process. And the reproduction is the only life process which helps in perpetuation of the race. That means producing new, new individuals of the next generations. Generation after generations, new individuals are produced. So race, reproduction is the only life process which helps in perpetuation of the race. So this is all about the different type of life processes. Why we are discussing about the life processes? Because photosynthesis is considered as the basic life process. Among all the different life processes, the basic life process is photosynthesis. Why photosynthesis is considered as basic life process? Number one, photosynthesis is the only life process which can convert the solar energy into chemical energy. No other life processes can convert the solar energy into chemical energy. Photosynthesis is the only life process which converts solar energy into chemical energy. Second point, photosynthesis is the only life process which produce, which release, which evolve oxygen, which is the life supporting gas. You might have heard recently in Delhi and in North India, many patients, they have died not because of COVID-19, but because of lack of oxygen in the intensive care units, ICUs. So without oxygen, patients, people, different living organisms, they cannot survive. So respiration, for respiration, oxygen is required. And this oxygen is produced only by the photosynthesis. That's why photosynthesis is considered as basic life process. Thirdly, it is the photosynthesis in which the food materials are synthesized, are produced. And this food is consumed by the plant themselves and they store them in different parts of their body which is available for all the living organisms in our planet. So because of these three reasons, photosynthesis is considered as the basic life process. Number one, it converts the solar energy into chemical energy. Secondly, it produces the life supporting gas that is oxygen. Thirdly, it produces or provides food materials for all the living organisms in our planet. So, because of these three reasons, photosynthesis is 
considered as the basic life process. Understand, children? So, please make a note of it. What is life process? The processes which help the living organisms for their survival and perpetuation of race are called life processes. Example, nutrition, respiration, circulation, excretion, reproduction, etc. Next, photosynthesis is considered as the basic life process because of three reasons. Already told you, it provides life supporting gas that is oxygen, it converts the solar energy into chemical energy, and it supplies food for the all the living organisms in this planet. Okay, children. Now, already from the equation for photosynthesis, we have come to know that 6 molecules of carbon dioxide plus 6 molecules of 12 molecules of water in the presence of sunlight and chloroplast, they give rise to C6H2O6 plus 6O2 plus 6 molecules of water, H2O. So from the previous class already we came to know that what are the requirements for photosynthesis and what are the products of photosynthesis. What are the requirements? If you will see, if you will see the equation for photosynthesis, 6 molecules of carbon dioxide plus 12 molecules of water in the presence of sunlight and chloroplast gives rise to C6H12O6 which is glucose and later on the glucose is converted into starch and it is stored in the chloroplast or in the leaves of the plants plus 6 molecules of oxygen and plus 6 molecules of water are produced. So what are the requirements? From this experiment you can say, from this equation you can say carbon dioxide which is obtained from the surrounding the terrestrial plants, they get the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and the aquatic plants, they get their oxygen which is dissolved in the water. Okay children, next water holding go, plants they absorb water through the roots. It is supplied up to the leaves. Next, sunlight. In the presence of sunlight only, photosynthesis will Take place. We have already told you autotrophic organisms are two types photoautotrophs and chemoautotrophs. Mostly the higher plants, they are photoautotrophs. That means they use sunlight as their source of energy. So, only in the presence of sunlight only, photoautotrophs can perform photosynthesis. Okay, children, and you know that chloroplast is mandatory. Only in the plants, higher plants, because they have chloroplast in their leaves, that's why they can prepare photosynthesis. They can prepare the food materials by a process called photosynthesis. So, what are the requirements of photosynthesis? Carbon dioxide, water, sunlight, and chloroplast. Next, what are the products of photosynthesis? As you know, this is the arrow mark in the chemical equation. Okay. Towards the arrow, here you will find the products. Glucose is the carbohydrate, simplest form of carbohydrate. Initially, it is produced during the photosynthesis. Later on, the glucose may be converted into starch, the glucose may be converted into cellulose, and it may be stored in different plant parts. So, we can say that formation of starch is the index for photosynthesis. In a plant, whether photosynthesis has occurred or not, how can we know? How can you prove? If we will prove that starch is synthesized, then we can prove that photosynthesis has occurred. If there are no starch, that means there is no photosynthesis. So, glucose, platinum st stored as starch, which is a complex carbohydrate, in the leaves and the leaves are called as the food factories of the plants. Next, oxygen gas is evolved. Oxygen gas is released during 
photosynthesis. That means water is also produced during photosynthesis. Understand, children? So now we will discuss, we will conduct an experiment, okay, to prove that starch is the index for photosynthesis. Starch is synthesized during the process of photosynthesis. And we will test the presence of starch by conducting an experiment by using iodine solution. Okay, children? So, what is the aim of your experiment? To prove that formation of the starch is the index for photosynthesis. So, children, starch is the index for photosynthesis. That's why if we will test, we will conduct experiment of photosynthesis, then we must have to conduct test for the presence of starch by conducting this iodine experiment. For this experiment, different apparatus are required. Okay, the requirements are, you can see, a beaker, methylated spirit, a tripod stand, Munson burner, asbestos gas, test tube, boiling water, iodine solution, and a petri dish. Okay, children, and already know the equation for photosynthesis, that is the 6 molecule of carbon dioxide plus 12 molecule of water in the presence of sunlight and chloroplast gives rise to glucose C6H12O6 plus 6 molecule of oxygen gas and 6 molecule of water. Now, we will discuss about the procedure, how you will do the experiment. First of all, as shown in the picture, you just arrange all the apparatus. Okay, first of all, take a tripod stand and put a Bunsen burner in it and put a asbestos girls over the tripod stand, put a beaker on it, take water in the beaker, then take a test tube, put a leaf from a potted plant which was exposed to the sunlight for more than 4 to 5 hours. Put the leaf in a test tube and take methylated spirit, that is methyl alcohol, in that test tube. Okay, children? Then, first of all, put on the Bunsen burner and allow the water to boil in the beaker. First of all, what we will do? First of all, we will boil the water present in the beaker. When water will heat it up, obviously the test tube contains methyl alcohol or methylated spirit. Directly, we are not boiling the alcohol. What will happen? It will heat up the alcohol, immediately it will catch fire. So, water is the uh, water is boiled and in the water bath you will take a test tube and inside the test tube methyl alcohol is present which is boiled and you will put the leaf inside the test tube so when the water gets heated up the alcohol present in the test tube also heated up and the leaf will be boiled understand children then what happens then the leaf will become colorless. The leaf inside the test tube, which is boiled in the methyl alcohol, will become colorless. Already you know, children, what is the color of the leaf? The color of the leaf is green in color. And you know that, why leaf is green in color? Because of the presence of a pigment called as chlorophyll. What is that pigment? Chlorophyll. So, when you boil the leaf in the methyl alcohol, the chlorophyll molecule lost its color. The green color will become colorless. So, leaf will become colorless. Understand, children? Then, very carefully, you will remove the test tube and with the help of a force, you will remove the leaf 
and you will show it near the cool water or you will you may dip it in the cool water and you will make it cool and once the leaf will become cool then you put it in a petri dish then I take with the help of a dropper take few drops of iodine or you can take betadine which is used as, a, as an ointment Okay, vitamin ointment also you can use because iodine is also present there. Or you can take directly iodine which is brownish in color. And you will put it, put a few drops of iodine on the leaf. Okay, okay children. Next is observation. This is the procedure of the experiment. Once the procedure is over, now we will observe. What you will observe on the petri dish? The color of the leaf will change into dark blue or that is also called as a black blue. If the leaf changes its color, that shows that starch is present in the leaf. And that's why, what is the inference? That is the result. Starch is the index for photosynthesis because starch is present because it has given reaction to the iodine solution because the color of the leaf has changed into black blue color that means the starch is present in the leaf due to photosynthesis so starch or the starch is the index for photosynthesis the presence of starch is the index for photosynthesis from this experiment we can say that Start is synthesized and it will index for photosynthesis. Thank you, children.